everybody. Jackie Schomburg Minen here. Quick note before this video begins, two things. One, I've added a new session to my free workshop. So a second free session. This one is going to be on Friday, March 31st at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Time, which if I've done my math correctly, equates to about midday Australian, well, Sydney time anyway in Australia. So I hope this gives people some more options and we've had a ton of people sign up, so I'm so excited. Keep signing up, but this will give you at least two separate options. Um, that was thing number one. Thing number two is I wanted to give you guys a tour of my paper storage, um, which I've done. So stay tuned. But the bad news is the audio is not the best. The microphone was way too close to me. I didn't realize it until the end of the video. And I considered re videoing the whole thing but spring break <laughs> we're gonna leave town for a little while and it just would take it would be significantly delayed if I didn't just release it so I'm gonna release it hopefully your ears are fine um and I apologize for that but hopefully you'll find the storage will satisfy some sort of curiosity on your end that um hopefully will be helpful all right so without further ado here is my glorious and messy uh, paper storage cabinet. A lot of you guys have been talking in the comments about paper storage, and I thought I would give you a tour of how I store mine. So this giant cabinet behind me, all the way up here, for scale, I'm 6'2", six, 6'2". Two, six two. So this is a really tall cabinet. Um, I think it's eight, eight feet tall. I don't remember, 90 inches maybe, a little bit, seven and a half. So um, I got this from Ikea, the land of all storage spaces in our house. And it is, it's amazing. I highly recommend extra shelves. <laughs> um, let me turn this camera around and I'll show you, I'll give you a little tour. Okay. So here we go, opening the drawers. This is a, a Pax wardrobe from Ikea. And the top shelf, you can see up above, I store some rolls. Um, the top shelf is panels, those 12 by 12 panels in there, just random paper and supplies, things that are too big to fit in regular places like this paper cutter and my laminator. Um, Fort Newman Mason cookie tin. I highly recommend you eat those cookies if you have the, have the ability to. Um, and just some extras. This is not super organized right now. There's some extra panels right now that are in progress. This is my giant cheap paper that I really don't use because it's it wrinkles a lot. Some other projects. Um, getting into my paper storage here. So this is large paper. Um, this is from one of my friends sent us some flowers and this was just beautiful paper. So I keep all the paper, some packing materials, packing paper that I've painted on, some black packing material, pieces of the white paper, the butcher paper that I keep underneath my art projects on my desk. They're a little bit unruly. This is my brand new stash of 500 sheets of tissue paper from Blick, so I have that. Um, jelly plates and stencils and masks and things here. Tissue paper. This is my tissue paper that I've used on full sheets. Most of the time I cut the sheets so that they're easier to store and manage, but these are full sheets. And again, I got a ton of shelves so that I can just have different types of paper. Now these are my favorite because they pull out. So I have frames in here. Hey, look at that family. Um, frames that I have not framed things in. Again, big paper, a dollar, take that. Uh, more packing materials. But having these shelves that pull out is amazing. Again, this is things I've stashed to a certain extent. And this is the main um, storage area for my tissue paper. So all of these different tissues, I've organized them by color. This is my black underneath it, well, underneath it seems to be just popular things that I liked using that are all colors. Here's some oranges and yellows, greens and teal. 
So these are just cafeteria trays. Um, I don't remember who I got this idea from, but someone stored all their tissue paper in these collage tray or these cafeteria trays. I thought it was genius because then you can spread everything out, but also pack it up very easily and you're still sorted. Highly recommend that method. These are <laughs> some other areas that, so this is just big sheets of regular paper, not tissue paper. So I have a lot of black and white copies in here. A lot of it is gel printed, some of it's just painted, but they're more um, full sheets than just partial sheets and scraps. Um, I don't often take things out of here, but when I'm starting something new, I'll go pick some pages out and some magazines, magazine pages. Back here, I had started compiling smaller scraps by color with all of this, but I never kept up with it. <laughs> so you can see I have one sad little purple scrap in there. Um, I, I will revisit that at some point, but the folders didn't end up being helpful. And these are the bins you've probably seen in my videos because these are the bins of small paper scraps that I keep. They used to be divided by size. These were bigger scraps and these were smaller scraps, but now it's kind of all mixed together. And these are the things I need to sort. So stay tuned for hopefully a new system there. All right, going down a shelf. This is just regular. So this is like podcasting stuff. Um, and my microphone that I use for my video voiceovers. This is other material for collaging or um, gel printing. So I've got yarn. I've got this kind of confetti packing paper. And just a lot of stuff that bag of rice, just in case, um, potato packaging. These are all really good for the jelly plate for making patterns. And some books that I will potentially tear out the pages and use. They have some cool pictures in some of them. Just some cool patterns. Be on the lookout for old books. They always have something interesting. Um, this is... Oof, it's hard to do with Whoa, with one hand. There you go, hold on. Okay, this is my giant thing of paper. So a lot of it is just um, a jelly plate, like half printed things that I'll choose from here as a starting point for a lot of my jelly plate work. Or if I'm just making collage paper, I'll start here and just apply some transparent colors over it. Here's one that, right, it was just printed and then I just played with some other colors on top. A lot of it's a pretty, very much a work in progress, but this is just, you know, me offloading my brayer, but there's still something cool about it. So for all of you who never throw anything away, cheers to you. I'm in the same boat, no judgment here. Even when something's I don't like at all, I still throw it in here because at some point I might just do something to it that'll be magical. All right, back here. Oof. This is really, whoa, really heavy. This is all magazines, some newspapers, mostly magazines and catalogs that I will draw from for collage. Those back. All right, going down a shelf. This is more magazines and coloring books, and I'll take the coloring book pages out sometimes for collage, and just some random, <laughs> some random Target bags that I was hiding um, from my children of just Christmas crafts. This is old artwork. Um, more, more stuff, more tools in there. And then I have my overflow paints, a lot of Nova Color paints in here before I put them into my condiment squeeze bottles. Here's my giant gloss, my gallon of gloss, medium tarps, orbital sander for some really fun collage messing around with. 
All right, so that is where I store 90% of my paper. I got this last summer and it has been such a huge help because I'm able to take all the papers, close the bin, and it looks so neat and tidy. <laughs> Even though it's not and it's very useful. And then over here next to this cabinet, I have all of my panels and in progress giant canvases. So I hope you found that interesting and I hope it was helpful. I highly recommend lots and lots of shelves if you're gonna put them on bookshelves. Basically you're making yourself a giant flat file with no drawers. Okay, so that is my giant cabinet of paper and miscellaneous other things. I hope that's helpful. I hope that it um, gives you some ideas for how to store paper. If you have the means and the space to buy a, a Ikea wardrobe, I highly recommend it. Otherwise, just pick up extra shelves. You can even just buy boards and have them cut to size and just make your bookshelf have lots of extra little shelves. And then you can basically build yourselves a flat file that's made out of shelves instead of drawers. Okay, it is way cheaper than an actual flat file, which I've been lusting after for years, but don't want to spend that much money on. Um, and it really helps things look nice because look how nice this is, right? The whole cabinet looks so nice and it's neat and it's white and it's pretty. And you don't know all of the paper behind the doors. Um, well, now you do. Now you know my secret. So highly recommended. Um, do what you can. Otherwise, just use the bin system. I've been using it for years and every once in a while I sort everything out and then I get back to cutting paper. Have a great day, guys. Bye.